Very few people within World of Tanks know how to maximize their gameplay and today's video is going to showcase how you can become part of the 1% of players that actually know what they're doing within the game and of course we are going to be looking at all of those kind of ways in which you can do that. So first things first, I think it's easy to take the tier 6 route in terms of showcasing uh, key things that you want to be looking out for within the game. So first things first, what do we need? Well, first of all, you need equipment. If you aren't running equipment on your tanks, you are just completely at a significant disadvantage. What the equipment will allow you to do is improve your view range, improve your concealment, improve your ventilation, which improves your crew performance. So your crew will essentially be better overall within the game as opposed to if you didn't have the equipment whatsoever. There is no negatives to the equipment that you will use within your tank, within World of Tanks console at least. So if you're going to put on equipment, it's basically better than not having it at all. As far as actually using view range, uh, I think that that is something we'll talk about now. And view range, especially at the lower tiers and mid tiers within World of Tanks console, are is quite possibly the biggest influence as to why you may not be performing as much as you'd want to see. And I guess that that's something that... Yeah, not all tanks will be able to take advantage of, but it's the mentality that you have to use uh, when approaching view range and being able to spot within World of Tanks console and also the idea behind spotting and how you can necess not necessarily spot opponents, but you can know where they are even when they aren't spotted because you can use the small things like Sixth Sense that you can get on your commander which I would recommend on every single commander within the game. Hence why I have it literally on every commander uh, that I'm actually running within the game. You can see here uh, some of the commanders just for the German tanks that I own are all having six cents and they typically all have the same style perks. And we've done a crew skills guide for you guys if you want to check that out in depth, which I'll link at the end of this video so you can have a look at those uh, along with some of the other camo mechanics uh, that you can check out. But primarily... The aim of today's video is to showcase some gameplay. We're going to talk through some of the key aspects that you want to be knowing to just carry games where you really are just feeling like you are the top 1% within World of Tanks. And that doesn't necessarily happen for everyone. You know, I'm not saying I'm in the top 1%, but yeah, after 20 something thousand battles now, uh, we certainly have been able to perform pretty well. Uh, and I kind of know my way around the game, obviously. Uh, you can see some of the statistics here uh, just going through. I mean, if you're interested in that, I'm not too bothered about it myself. But there we go. Let's actually get into some gameplay, showcase how you can apply those sort of things that we've been talking about along with some more advanced stuff and also talking about some of the beginner stuff so you can get into the whole uh, mentality of performing better within your games because no one wants to come bottom of the team every single game. So the first replay we're taking a look at is in the STRV M4257, the Swedish tier 6 autoloading medium premium tank within a console. And so this one is a really, really good way of showcasing some of the more advanced mechanics in terms of an autoloader. Yeah, they're not necessarily that advanced, but they bring in a new aspect where you have to kind of think about when you want to be reloading, when you can sacrifice, you know, that one shell left in your magazine to reload and then get a full shell by the time you next enter a conflict. It doesn't happen all of the time, but if you can use that to your advantage, yeah, you can deal a lot of damage really, really quickly with autoloaders. So with this tank and with any tank, in the lower tiers, typically you will have better view range. If you set up your tank with advanced optics, with advanced concealment, you're going to be able to outspot a lot of the tanks on the enemy team. And you can see this here. We're, be, we're able to outspot this T3485M, who obviously probably doesn't have advanced optics because you're probably within the, uh, the kind of spotting range. And so we've managed to get some assistance damage already at the beginning of the game. This spot right here is a really good spot to be able to get some early damage and something that I always use early on within Sand River. Do I necessarily stay here all of the time? Does the spot necessarily work every single time that you can play Sand River? No, but what it does do is allows me at the very beginning of the game to assess where the enemy team are going to be moving. Are they moving up really, really aggressively? Are they all going onto the sand dunes to the right? Or are they alternatively, no one's really going there. And so you can then go, well, if no one's going on the sand dunes, they're probably either camping in base or they're on the northern side of the map at which point you can then move around the map 
decide what you're going to do, put yourself in the best position to kind of get ready for when the enemies then finally do all get spotted. However, in this game, we've managed to spot for our team on that T28 HTC, just keep him spotted essentially, making sure that we say uh, RT safe by getting right up against the rock there. That is the one key thing about this position, is that if you aren't right behind that rock, essentially you are pretty vulnerable to artillery. And so yeah, you will get smacked and I promise you, you will definitely get smacked. Now what you'll notice here is we've taken a bit more of an aggressive approach. We know that since there's the tank destroyer and the heavy tank below us on that kind of central line just down to our right, they've not spotted anyone in the direct proximity which allowed us to move up to this point. You don't just go blindly into things. This is what usually 99% of players typically do within World of Tanks and how they lose the majority of their hit points is when you go around that corner, when you make that mistake and you manage to just go around uh, and then you get hit maybe once, maybe twice, maybe you get Amarak, maybe you get tracked at the same time, maybe you don't take a premium repair kit, which means then your game is essentially ruined because yeah, you could have just either side scraped around that corner, waited just a couple more seconds and decided what you were going to do uh, in that regard. Now, from this point, 1,461 damage in a tier 8 game is not terrible. We've also picked up 700 assistance, which, yeah, again, that's fairly okay for a tier 6. Uh, nothing, you know, majorly overpowered or, or certainly one of the games that I would probably feature <laughs> within the channel. Uh, not saying I've never done that, but I, I wouldn't typically do it. But you can see here, we're able to just get into a nice position where we're kind of flexible. We're in the center of the map, which means we can progress either forward to backwards. If we need to support our team on the right, we can. If we need to support our team on the left, we can. And that is something that a lot of players don't really <laughs> rate within the game. They put themselves in a very limited position. If I just go down one singular flank and that is all I'm going to do in a game, and then I'm just going to continue on that flank, I'm not going to turn around. I'm not going to be flexible within the game. Well, typically, you're not going to be able to get that couple of damaging hits where maybe you could have and then maybe your teammate doesn't manage to take out that tank that you would have been able to get a couple of hits on and then it impacts the game so the small little percentages where you think oh that didn't really matter you know I only missed out on a damaging shot you know that could have been really one of the major impacts of the game and so you would have ended up losing um, the game because of that. Obviously within this game, that's not really the case, we're winning pretty substantially, 8-4, to four. yes, even I drive like an absolute bot sometimes, um, <laughs> trying to drive up that rock, but yeah, I'm going to blame it on the bush sat in front of it, but 2200 damage, 681 assistance, and in a tier 8 game, usually people feel pretty like, I don't know, lacklustre, you know, you can't really deal it, do anything, but I actually take the tier 8 games where you're plus 2, minus 2, as actually quite a bit of a challenge, you know, you can do things that tanks don't typically have the ability to do in low tiers, means you can typically get more damage, and that's something I always love about playing the low tiers, which is often uh, what a lot of people don't really realise, is that, yeah, you can still have fantastic games, you just have to play... Um, ultimately the best you possibly can in the game you don't get many chances within when you're bottom tier within the matchup like this is because yeah typically i can lose three quarters of my hit points to either of these two tank destroyers but that doesn't matter because we can put rounds into them um very easily and you can see here i don't know quite what was going on but there's about tons of smoke there don't know if that's intended by wargaming but yeah as you see We've managed to kind of hold off two tank destroyers. Yes, if they came both at the exact same time, it wouldn't have gone too well. But by spotting them, keeping them lit up, by keeping this Scorpion G lit up, we're enabling our artillery to hone in on either of the two and just support us. Yes, I'm alone currently with a heavy tank that's coming up, um, so we do need to be a little bit careful. And so we're not, we're not going to push in. I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to be... Uh, silly, we're going to actually wait it out, wait for the Scorpion G to either do something, uh, which they have, and we're just going to kind of try and make our way down. I realised, yeah, I could potentially go down here. Um, unfortunately, got stuck on the rock, which is always really, really fun, and <laughs> one of the more tedious aspects of uh, World of Tanks is when you get stuck and, yeah, it ruins your game, but 
2783 damage obviously not every single tank gets the ability to pump out like 600 damage with a, a clip and so yeah in a smaller tank destroyer or maybe a, another tank you wouldn't have been able to do that but easily we're able to just put round after round into the SU-130 PM and are finally the Scorpion G on our team manages to take him out as you can see another load of damage and this is all you have to do you don't have to be super aggressive you don't have to feel like you're fighting all of the time on the front line all you have to do make yourself flexible survive for the longest period of time and you can have damage games like this where you're bottom tier and you're literally doing more damage than every single tier 8 tank on your team and of course that's why we managed to pick up a mastery badge and why we managed to come top of the team and you can see look dealing almost twice the damage of any tier 8 tank on our team well we did do twice the damage of any tier 8 tank except from that scorpion g right there but that's only four shots of his damage so there we go it's a really really easy way to do and i think that the these videos are really good to showcase how you should be thinking within the game we'll get into another gameplay here and hopefully we can see some different aspects with a different tier tank and uh, yeah let's get into it right so the next game is not a win but what it does do is showcase how even when you lose you can still have really good games and you can manage to go up on your marks of excellence you can try and improve at least in some regards within your gameplay and this is exactly how you can do it we're taking a look at the tier 9 batch at 25t ap and this is a really really nice tank to kind of showcase once again an auto loader but what it does do is show <sighs> In those periods of time where you've got such a long reload as does the batch at 25t ap have you can still be doing something beneficial for your team and although you know your team don't necessarily always do something that is going to really help you out and uh, yeah that doesn't always work out too well you might end up losing the game but typically you can still perform i see a lot of people their kind of bad games are really bad where you know you've only done one shot of damage to be honest with you, touch wood, I very rarely do one shot of damage and get taken out. It would have to be something like an artillery piece. It would probably have to be some sort of Amarak. I don't know. It doesn't really typically happen. I'm not trying to blow my own horn. But as long as you know, you know the key aspects of the game and you can place yourself in the right position. Because positioning is key. And I cannot stress this enough. There are so many situations where I just think someone just doesn't know what they're doing in terms of where they're taking their tank and that's why you're losing out on so much damage. You can see there at the beginning of the game what I'm trying to do is just spot for our team. We didn't have to take the shot of the T50, the Skoda T50 which was probably a misplay actually uh, but what we did do by doing that is we've got some assistance damage. We're now up by 815 assistance without us probably would never have got spotted. And although we're actually firing rounds at this FE4202 who's kind of sat out in the open, kind of underestimating the shell velocity of these rounds, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, but yeah, we can see that we've managed to pick up a nice bit of damage as well. And with that, I wanted to kind of highlight something just back there, was that even though the tank has gone und undetected, that doesn't mean that the tank has gone, it's invisible, doesn't mean that you can hit him. You can hit a tank across the map, as long as your shell can actually reach there because some rounds actually go out of range but regardless of that basically even when a tank disappears it's still actually there it's just not actually spotted and so you can't see it i know that's a basic idea within the game but it does mean that you can blind fire people that's one thing i see a lot of people missing out on within the game they don't blind fire they don't ever really take that last shell like you saw us do there on the FE4202 where you can get that extra shell of damage and that's really costing you damage and also uh, your team potentially from taking them out at the end of the game. Obviously that's being said with an autoloader where you can fire rounds really really qu quickly and consecutively uh, that's something that you'll probably want to kind of think about but yeah definitely make use of that and what you can see me doing here is it's pretty easy we can put rounds into the 60tp side of the turret and this is where I guess the game becomes a little bit bad because we haven't got much support over this side. We've got an entire team that's basically lemming trained over to the right hand side. And to be honest with you, they're not doing particularly great. They're getting taken out. They're losing a lot of hit points to a couple of tanks over there. 
And so, yeah, we've got to do something on this flank. And you see what I'm doing here. I noticed that on the right hand side is going badly. So what we're trying to do is just spot for our team. If we can get any kind of help over this side where we can progress the flank, we could potentially help out the right hand side who are going to find it very difficult once they've won that right hand side to actually push. And that's where on Redshire you never really want to go afterwards. You want to then, once you've won that side, is actually turn back and then help out your team on the other flank. That's typically how you want to go. Um, because otherwise what happens is you kind of win it and then you're going into a lot of TDs that have literally sat there, hold down in fantastic positions, defending their base. And uh, as you push down that kind of hillside, you then get taken out by all of the additional tanks that are going to be there as well. So it's always very, very painful. Obviously you can see we've picked up 1900 damage and 1000 assistance and I did say this is not a perfect game. This is not a game that is, you know, necessarily great and in fact this is a pretty awful game in terms of where it's going, how much damage we've done and how much damage I'd ever like to have done in this game. But what it does is it is kind of showing you even in the terrible games you can still have good results and that's really where we're going and how you can maximise even when you lose the amount of damage that you're doing because yeah a lot of the time I see people just throw their tank away because they know they're going to lose why would you want to do that why would you not want to get more damage why would you not want to uh, increase the chances you could potentially win I'm not saying that you will every game but you could win if you just did a little bit extra at the end of the game rather than just throw yourself away and that's really where you see people when they get to the 90% mark on their marks of excellence where they find it really difficult because they find it hard to be consistent and regardless of the damage result um, I think it's the extras and the additionals that you have to do within the game that really uh, get you over that kind of mark now obviously damage numbers are as how is it's actually calculated um, but yeah you definitely have to actually perform within the game itself but you can see here we managed to position ourselves in an area that's going to allow us to get some extra damage before uh, our team inevitably falls yes i could have gone all in with them but how many shots would i have got i'm the paper tank i'm the one they're probably going to flick onto and yeah i'm not going to last very long and it also means that once i'm out of shells i'm never really going to be able to get away and if we didn't have enough damage potential to basically get rid of all of the tanks there it's not going to be very good for me because I'm not going to be able to do anything after that and therefore I'm just a sitting duck so if we can get into this position I'm able to reload you can see I've reloaded now and we still helped out our team at least somewhat with that STRV although you know in the end it didn't really help them that much obviously we've picked up a little bit of damage on the M60 and now we can just keep spotting for our team keep helping the artillery if we need to and uh, yeah we can just continually spot Obviously, 9-2, to two, I'm not going to be able to win this, but these are the sort of things that you can do to really maximise your gameplay. You can see 60 TP, we've got a, basically an Object 268 version 5 there, and what we can do is just spot for our artillery, that's literally the only thing left in this game, and I guess... You can see even in this pretty awful game we've still managed to pick up 4,800 combined and that's in a game where you really didn't necessarily have the best uh, kind of things going on. We should have probably not reloaded, I just thought if I'm going to actually have a good game I'm going to have to be fully reloaded and if I don't reload now we're not going to be able to take out the Object 268 version 5 anyway so we need to do something and yeah, hopefully he bounces, hopefully he misses, I don't know, but unfortunately he doesn't and we get a little bit <laughs> a little bit of assistant, uh, a little bit of damage from him ramming, but nothing major and then I've just decided, you know what, let's actually just try and avoid a shot, but the backtrack 58 being the artillery that it is just decides to hit us and ruin any chances of that. But there you go, still 4,800 damage from a game that was pretty terrible uh, in terms of the way it played out. And, the way that we kind of have to think in order to maximize our damage game even when you know the whole team is getting taken out it's all about that moving getting those extra couple of shots and you'll know that as you go and progress through world of tanks console hopefully this video as a kind of guide video is going to help you somewhat we'll do quite a few more of these where i think we'll look at the things that you need to be doing yourself to be that one percent better in all regions making you way better overall so there we go hopefully you enjoyed this video if you like it then like it and subscribe for more videos like this and of course don't forget to check out that camo guide and the video on screen right here on the left hopefully you enjoy thanks for watching goodbye